Hi, my name is Christopher Lester, and I'm a chartered financial consultant, which is like a CPA in financial planning. I'm also a retirement income certified planner, which helps you not only get to retirement, but through retirement. I actually am also a certified college planner to help you pay for college without going broke. So with almost 30 years experience here in Somerset, New Jersey, I've been helping clients along the way figure out and understand how money works. Math does not equal money. So today's topic is on sequence of return and sequence of return risk. So without further ado, let me draw your attention to our PowerPoint. Hi, welcome to our video here titled Averages Lie. I'd like to take us and play a little game that I created. And I can honestly say this is probably the greatest game ever created. And that's because I made it up. So let's assume that you work for an employer. And unfortunately, you work for that employer yesterday and they let you go. However, you were so highly sought that another company immediately picked you up. But this company had a couple rules before you could come work for them. In order to come work for them, you had to roll your entire 401k from your old employer into your new employer's plan. And they only had two choices. And the only thing that you knew about these two choices was one, was it was titled Portfolio One and had an average rate of return of 6.43% or Portfolio Two had an average rate of return of 6.4%. And the question is, well, where would we put your money? And you had to put it all in the portfolio and you had to pick one. All of it's got to go in either one. And which would you pick? Well, logic would dictate with this limited amount of information, we would put it in portfolio one with the higher rate of return. Almost 100% of the people will say 6.43%. So now let me add another piece of information. Let's say that you had a little bit of knowledge about the portfolio manager. And portfolio manager of portfolio one was a little known company called Vanguard. Now Vanguard, obviously well known and you cannot go on the internet and find anything negative said about John Bogle or, or Vanguard. Um, and now let's look at portfolio two. Who are these funds managed by? Well, this is a fictitious firm called ABC investment advisors, right? So now based on this new additional information with the parameters I set forth earlier, where do we put our money? And the answer again, logically people pick portfolio one. And then lastly, let's say another piece of information is divulge and they disclose or share with us what's Vanguard known for? Low fees, right? Typically between 20 and 40 basis points. And a basis point is a percentage less than 1%. Or uh, portfolio two has an average of 1.5%. So now with this additional information, where are we putting our money? And I can tell you folks unanimously, everybody says portfolio one. As a matter of fact, I don't even know who you are that's watching this video. And I can venture to say that you probably have portfolio one. I mean, let's be honest, when we look at our 401k options, uh, I know that every single person will go through the prospectuses, go through um, looking their, uh, you know, one year, three year, five year, 10 year, since inception, look at all the rates of return, and then they pick accordingly. Come on, I've been doing this a long time, almost 30 years, and what we typically do is we'll look at the, the top three or four, See who has the highest average rate of return for the last 10 years or since inception. And we pick those and then we diversify and split it amongst those. 
and we feel like we're diversified and we've reduced our risk. But is that really the best course of action? So let's see how these portfolios would have fared if we put a little bit of math behind them or numerical values. So let's start with portfolio one. Portfolio one, and I'll get to sharp ratio in another video. But as you can see, over a 19 year period, that there were some negative years, some positive years, and you total all those years up, divide by 19, and we get our average of 6.43%. However, uh, if you look at portfolio two, over that same time frame, you add those totals up, that's where the 6.4% is. But now let's add an account value to this. So again, let's say that this person started in year 2000, portfolio one had a starting balance of $1 million. And let's say that their advisor's name was Bill. And Bill coming off the 1990s, didn't have to try too hard to say, hey, invest with me, we can do really well and continue this upward trend. This plan participant continued to take their money and invest with Bill, but you can see in 2000 was the beginning of one of the worst downturns in US history of the S&P. So the S&P turned around, didn't do so well. At the end of the year, went from a million dollars down to 909,000. Now, the plan participant calls Bill. Bill assures him that this is just a paper loss, that the market will come back and to, to ride out the storm. So the plan participant continues to do so. And in the second year, the account started at 909,000 but now it's lost almost 12%. And if you look all the way to the right, the account value is now 800,000. That's like a 20% loss in two years. Well, now the plan participant is really nervous and they call Bill and again, Bill reassures them that over time, that this account will come back. So this plan participant continues to have faith in Bill. And as you can see, the $800,000 now lost 22% on top of its previous losses, is now down $177,000 in this example, and three years into this plan is now at $623,000. Now the plan participant calls up Bill and is told that Bill no longer works there. <laughs> now normally I get a chuckle out of the audience when I do these classes and I go over this example, but there's, there's some truth to that. And everybody will say the market comes back. And look at the next year in 2003, the market does in fact increase 28%, but notice that we still are not back to even. You know, but let's, let's now draw our attention to the lower right hand corner. And at the end of this period of time, these 19 years, right, the average rate of return is 6.43%. This portfolio has grown to an estimated $2.4 million. Not a bad run. Now let's look at how portfolio two would have worked. Well, portfolio two, if you look over to the right hand corner, we'll fast forward. We never had some of those, those lower dips. And at the end of this period, this portfolio had three, almost $3.1 million in it. And the question is why? And the answer is, is because they avoided a lot of the losses. And this is where tactical management can come in. It's no guarantee that you can't lose money, but with strategies, you can start to have defensive postures or active management to avoid some of these heavy downturns. Now, I don't know about you, but 2.4 million versus three, 3.1, that's six or $700,000. In my world, that's real money. But now here's the question I will ask everybody. Let me ask you a question. If we change the order of the crediting rate of these two accounts, so I'm gonna draw our attention to portfolio one. We just changed the order. So some of the negatives are in the middle or maybe at the end. And we change the order of these accounts. Will it change the sum at the end of the period. Now I can tell you, as I've said, I've, I've conducted many classes and workshops and I have a lot of intelligent folks walk through the rooms, people that have been managing money for a long time. And I can tell you that in, I mean, almost always 100% of the people say, yeah, we'll change the values, right? And, and you would think so, right? 
that, hey, changing the order and the operation of this should change the total at the end? And the answer is, it does not. Because I'm going to draw our, our attention to a topic that we learned a long time ago. And it's called the commutative principles of mathematics. And I know it's a very simple example, but I need you to understand this. Right? So what is 1 times 2 times 3? And the answer is 6. All right. If we change the order to 2 times 1 times 3, the sum is still 6. And once again, 3 times 2 times 1 is 6. So when it comes to multiplication, changing the order does not matter. Where it matters is when we withdraw. And that's why I titled this uh, presentation, Sequence of Return Risk. So now let's apply some math. And now let's say that we are at retirement. You just, this person, plan participant, needed to retire in the year 2000, needed to withdraw $50,000 a year to be able to maintain lifestyle. And look at what happens when the account values go down the same, right? Same sequence of, uh, as the original slide, but now we're withdrawing $50,000. And what that does is it locks in the losses along the way. And this is why when I ask audiences who here is afraid of running out of money in retirement, almost 100% of the room will put up their hand. It is one of the number one fears of retirement planning. And look at now, we don't have $2.4 million in this account after 19 years. So almost 20 years into retirement, this plan participant is almost broke and cannot afford another correction, right? Versus a little bit more tactically managed account. And at the end of this, hey, we didn't have 3.1, but we're still at about 1 million, 1.1. I don't know what it's gonna end up because again, past performance is not indicative of future results, but it's helping you to understand that we have to put on a different set of rules when we enter into retirement. And this is why quite often, I just had a client uh, that reached out to me. And when I asked them, what rate of return do you want to use long-term? They were absolutely confident that they could get 9% on a portfolio. You know, they were young from now until they retire. And they, are, they go, yeah, but even with the market, it always comes back. And, and, and that is true. And in the accumulation phase, I will never try and dissuade somebody from what they think they can get on a long-term average on their investment portfolios. But if we're going to do a fair comparison and understand we need to do an apples to apples comparison, that's what I do. And I'll help people to, to peel back the layers of the onion to understand exactly how these accounts work at your 401k. So now here's the last question. Knowing what you know now, do you want portfolio A or portfolio one or portfolio B, portfolio two? And everybody in the audience will say now portfolio B or portfolio two. And yet all you have available, unless you do the self-directed option at your 401k is portfolio one. So if you'd like to learn more, I'm going to invite you to reach out. Look forward to, like I said, I have some other topics I'd like to talk to you about. We're going to go over sharp ratio. We're going to go over standard deviation. We're going to go over beta and we're going to go over alpha. Just because you should understand these factors and how they affect your future. Chris Lester, Charter Financial Consultant, Retirement Income Certified Planner and Certified College Planner from Somerset, New Jersey, wishing you to have a great day. Look forward to speaking with you. Bye-bye.